Milo, the biggest slime Microsoft ever told. AI is coming for your jobs, chat. Shit yourself. Hello, I'm Bill Gates. Hello. I'm Microsoft. In this video, you're going to see the future. Oh my God! Why do you have a child in your p fucking TV? You freak. All right, it's 2009. Pigs are flying, wow. everything has this aesthetic, and Microsoft has just announced a groundbreaking new piece. And World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King is out on PC. Wow. Tech at E3. Utilizing the latest advancements in motion capture, Project Natal, as it was initially named, Natal. was a new device for the Xbox that aimed to win audiences over with pure wow factor. The main goal of Natal was to bring families into the gaming equation by taking controllers out of it. And this resulted in an intuitive get up and play. <laughs> God, we came so far. Waddle K, Resident Sleeper. Buddy, your favorite expansion is BFA. Don't fucking talk. You're fucking beefa. Fucking expansion named after beef. Play experience that made it easy for beef demographic to play and enjoy. For 2009, oh, it was pretty damn impressive. And wow. in the eyes of many consumers, it was Sony and Nintendo's motion tech. God, it looks so bad. Obsolete. But that night at E3, Microsoft would manage to continue the hype train. You see, after the unveiling of Project Natal, another speaker would take the stage to present a tech demo for Microsoft's new hardware. You know, I, I want to just say one thing to you, and that's the word interactive. That's Peter Molyneux, game designer for the Fable Peter series Molyneux. and former creative director oh. at Microsoft. And what he's about to share with this audience at E3 will echo in eternity as one of the most intentionally deceitful unveilings in Microsoft's history. Oh, shit. In his presentation, Peter claims to have developed an experience with Natal that he thinks will fulfill every gamer's life. I don't think gamers have a desire to talk to fucking kids in a TV. Am I crazy? To build an innocent yet intimate relationship with a 10 year old boy. Oh, wait. What? Oh, you guys just wanted Fable 3? Yeah. Oh, shit. In the demo, Peter introduces us to Project Milo. A game about Anyone want to talk to kids? No. See you, hear you, and actually get to know you through the screen. What the fuck? Hi, Milo. How you doing? Hi. I remember this promo distinctly. This this particular one where it's a woman talking to a man. Yeah, you okay? By making use of the Natal hardware, Peter demonstrates how players can seemingly interact with Milo through free-flowing conversations, giving the impression that the character on screen is somehow capable of independent thought. Here we're seeing Claire being recognized. And oh the my god, Peter Molyneux, man. And that He's so crazy. In Milo's face. Those are all being seen for the first time. At first glance, it looks quite impressive. Yet the way Peter describes it, you'd think his team had just stumbled on the means to creating sentient AI. And something tells me that's kind of what he wanted us to think. What's worse is that one look back at the comments section for this presentation proves that we bought right in. Uh -huh. Of course, there were skeptics, but for the majority- I wouldn't get too worked about this just yet. Peter Molyneux is incredible at hyping up people for his inevitable mediocre final product. <laughs> people really Based. thought Milo was a game changer. Literally. I mean, audiences were more excited for this game than the actual hardware it was demoed for. Not to mention the potential this kind Star of- Star ratings? Yeah, man. ...genres in the industry. The problem? It was all complete bullshit. The yeah. demo was fake, the actor was acting, and Peter was essentially lying through his teeth. Yeah! Or was he? No, I'm just kidding. He was. He of totally course he was. was. And this was most certainly not the first time either. You see, Peter was notorious throughout the industry for overpromising, exaggerating, and flat out lying about upcoming games. So he was a con man. 
Or is he just not a conman? How is he like allowed? I don't know. I guess I guess that's what Bobby does too. Like he apparently Bobby Kotick apparently used to not scam people, but he what he would do as a child is resell things like a salesman, and that's how people knew he would have a good future ahead of him. In terms of like, you know, being a corporate bastard, but that's just me. I mean, you could probably score the rest of this video with the flight of the bumblebee, and it would match the tone for the level of chaos <laughs> this man is calling. But Milo? Milo was his magnum opus, a lie so deceitful that it crossed the point of outrage to just actually being kind of- Bytomics! By utilizing his arsenal of clever word choice alongside demo footage that mainly consisted of smoke and mirrors, Peter managed to convince an entire generation of gamers that he had developed a technology 50 years ahead of its time. Oh my what god, dude. What was a roller coaster ride of PR shenanigans, miscommunication, backpedaling, and deception that would ultimately amount to nothing. <laughs> but to understand how this happened in the first place, we need to take a look back at the man himself. Peter. A roller coaster oh, lies, you're right. After founding Bullfrog Productions in 1986. Oh, Bullfrog Productions, that's the studio that got killed. I remember this. Peter Molyneux would leap headfirst into game design with a focus on population sims. You know the ones, cool. those top down games with disembodied. I fucking love black and white. I love this game Body so much. Man. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? This is awesome. Everything in the game world. These concepts were fascinating to Peter, and ultimately became the stage that allowed his knack for ideation to really shine. What if you were the owner of a theme park, the keeper of a dungeon, or Tycoon. the deity in charge of an entire island? Yep. Peter's so games great. put the player in complete control, which ultimately helped redefine the scope for what games could actually be about, and usually with outstanding results. Throughout his time at Bullfrog, Peter would make leaps and bounds within the simulation space, known well for his early adoption of artificial intelligence and his invention of the god game genre. Okay. This would eventually lead their longtime publisher, Electronic Arts, to acquire the company in 1995. Unfortunately, EA's acquisition changed the way Bullfrog developed games, and Peter, who was unsatisfied with the changes, left, left the studio in 97 to pursue a new venture. This would ultimately lead Molyneux to found Lionhead Studios with- Oh, this was the game that made black and white, okay. A handful of other ex-Bullfroggers. From there, Peter would spend a sizable chunk of money from the Bullfrog deal, investing over $6 million into Lionhead's first game. Wow. After That's a lot of dosh. Black and White released in March Yay! of 2001 and was met with widespread critical acclaim. I played in the like game was praised heavily. 2008 or something. In artificial intelligence, even I love Black and White. I know it's such a good game. The most intelligent being in a game. These accomplishments were what ultimately. Keep in mind, the Guinness World World of Book of World Records is actually just fucking stupid. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Those people are fucking frauds. He solidified Peter's belief in AI, inspiring him and his team to pursue further research on the topic. So, that same year, Peter would officially launch a research project. The goal of their efforts was to develop a game that was smarter than anything ever seen on the market. Milo's a development. That years from now would eventually become Milo. But until okay. then, Peter would codename his venture Project Dimitri. Okay, weird name see, choice, Peter but all right. Code names and had a quirk of introducing and changing these names every time he spoke to journalists. <laughs> Throughout his career, there was Project Dimitri, Project Ego, Project X, Project Milo. I mean, mm -hmm. for a guy that couldn't keep his mouth shut in front of journalists, he sure did love secrets. Okay. And this problem had certainly become evident throughout his career. Tell me lies, tell me Up sweet little point, lies. Peter had already begun developing a reputation for himself as somewhat of an overpromiser, notorious for making outlandish claims about features that would be included in upcoming games. Peter would later confess to even making up new features on the spot just to I've made up up to stop journalists going to sleep and I really apologize to the team for that. Dude, this guy's kind of a dick. <laughs> what the fuck? Interested. And that problem would only grow worse when his company released Fable in 2004. 
I heard to Fable was a good for game, you, though. Peter would make all sorts of false promises for Fable, which ultimately ended up hurting the game's reception among fans. To give you a better idea of what I mean, here's just a few. 1. Okay. Peter said that Fable would be a completely open world with zero invisible boundaries. Uh... 2. Peter said you could have children who take over as the playable character if you die in the game. I remember Three. this! Peter said you they made an entire MMO based around this because they didn't have it in Fable. I remember looking at um Kickstarter, there was like an MMO out there that they were making. Plant a tree and watch it grow to fruition in real time. What? And so on. Of course, none of these promises actually made it into the game, and mm -hmm. probably caused most of his development team to slam their heads through drywall. <laughs> the worst part was that Fable was a good game that just happened to fall flat because of heightened expectations. Some this is why you never overhype a game and you just you just tell them what it is, and then people can figure it out for themselves. You may write this behavior off as a passionate game designer getting overly excited about his game. This is what happened to No Man's Sky 2 as well, by the way. And people were so mad at me for pointing it out. Except this guy did it, and it was the same thing. Game. But no matter how you twist it, Peter's big mouth was just plain unprofessional, and it was starting to affect his rep- And No Man's Sky was actually even worse than this because Fable was actually a good game, it just wasn't as good as they promised. No Man's Sky was unplayable when it launched, and people fucking got their panties in a twist when I told them that. Especially on YouTube, because they're a bunch of fucking stinkies. Reputation. Who hate me. After Microsoft stinkies. acquired Lionhead in 2005, the suits would attempt to remedy this issue by keeping a PR team around Peter at all <laughs> times. This was That's done so to funny. ensure he didn't get himself into any more trouble. Oh my yeah, god. These, these nasty PR policemen that are all around me. PR these, these... policemen! I'm not to talk about. We're the PR guards that are standing at the back, shooting daggers with their eyes. Obviously, I can't answer questions like that because that may, I may, but I would get killed. <laughs> Look at him smiling! <laughs> he knows when he's a fucking rat! He's like, um, I can't talk about it because these people are telling me not to. <laughs> Boy, you're I such know. an ass, man. I know you're probably wondering, well, how does Milo fit into all this? And you'd be right to ask that. Well, sometime in 2007, after many years of experimenting, Peter had finally found some direction for Project Dimitri. Dimitri. For roughly six years, Lionhead's research into AI game systems had never actually resulted in a full game. Okay. Sure, many of their advancements made it into other games as features, but nothing quite managed like a to harness was all great. their efforts into one single title. And now, with pressure from Microsoft to actually return results, Peter needed to finally turn his passion project into profit. So, in 2007, Peter pitched a brand new idea to his associate Gary Carr, who was then uh -huh. an executive producer at Microsoft. This Micro new idea pain. was built upon everything the team had worked on with Project Dimitri, but under a completely new name. You see, by 2007, Codename Dimitri was kind of a bad word around Lionhead, and had become somewhat synonymous with failure. So, in order to improve <laughs> morale regarding the project, Peter would codename their new venture Milo, named after the game's protagonist. Development for Project Milo officially began in 2007. It's as fucking a sort dystopian of to look at. Centered around the life of one individual. AI this, children. Course, children are already bad. Of population-based Sims and flipped it on its head. Instead of a simulation involving multiple people, Project Milo would be about just one, a boy, and your actions in the game would determine who Milo grew up to be. It was basically a glorified parenting sim, except instead of taking the role of an actual parent, you were more of a friend, or mentor, or slave? I mean, the first slave? prototype literally just had you doing Milo's chores, and from what, what I've fuck? learned, it didn't sound incredibly impressive. But, according to Peter, okay. Project Milo was utilizing an impressive display of AI technology, combining advancements made with Project Dimitri alongside Microsoft's own research. 
It was something Peter felt incredibly proud of. Leading he looks really sad. In an that their You're right. Could eventually find them on the front page of Science Magazine. Oh my God! The note, though, was that until this point, this guy's ego must be through the roof, man. What a fucking game! Project Milo was strictly being developed for use with a controller, and there was absolutely no knowledge of Project Natal up to this point. Uh -huh. That was until 2008, when one of Peter's associates at Microsoft spilled the beans. Turns yes. out, a group of Microsoft engineers had been working closely with an Israeli tech company to bring motion sensing hardware to the Xbox 360. Okay. This technology was first introduced to the world at the 2006 Game Developers Conference Whoa. by a company called PrimeSense. Do they still do that? At the convention, PrimeSense revealed a revolutionary new device capable of sensing and mapping human bodies in real time. At this point, the tech Fancy. was still in its early stages, but it showed promise, which was illustrated through Prime Sense's earliest concept videos. And while many of these demonstrations looked impressive, the production quality was a bit more akin to a Tim and Eric sketch. <laughs> so, what was the name of that movie you told me you wanted to see the other day? How about that one? Dude, something about 2009 commercials is like that era between 2000 2010 was so wild. <laughs> Bye, Fusion. Good night. Order pizza. Order pizza on your oh. Xbox, by the way. Hi, how are you? Uh, hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm gonna have to call you back tomorrow night. Okay. Bye. Good night. As Bye. cheesy as these demos were, the concept most certainly caught the attention of Microsoft. How could you say no to that face? Pizza cat diamonds, what else you need? A girlfriend, clearly. That one on his next to him right here is fake. And especially Peter Molyneux. This would lead Peter to completely rework Project Milo to incorporate this new hardware, which Microsoft had codenamed Project Natal. Okay. Peter now envisioned a game where Xbox players could on. actually speak to Milo through Natal, and Milo would ideally respond back. Microsoft ran with it, and for roughly the next year and a half, Lionhead would double the size of their team to help steer Project Milo in this new direction. This is why Black and White this 3 never happened. This would set a chain of events that would eventually lead to Peter's infamous demo at E309. No. Contrary to popular belief, Project Milo was not entirely a hoax. As misleading as it was, the video Peter showed- This fucking right here? The feature demonstrated here actually worked IRL? No shot! Really? Showed at E3 I don't was believe it. technically not a complete fabrication, because Lionhead was really working on a real game. And after the incorporation of Project Natal, Milo was actually capable of a handful of impressive feats. He could understand over 500 unique words, recognize the color of your clothing, and even interpret the tone of your voice. Okay, this was all that's real pretty cool. technology that the Lionhead team was working on, and it was Me? all really being done with Project Natal. The problem? It was still pretty janky. Developers who worked on the project admitted that it was a challenge to demonstrate the game live, and players could very easily break the illusion of Milo's sentience if they wished to do so. What made this situation more dire was the fact that later that year, Project Milo was set to be unveiled at E3 alongside- uh, They just needed another five years in the oven and it could have been groundbreaking, but as usual, Microsoft needs a demonstration now! Now, 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 show them what you got! Or we're taking away so your money. how would they do it? Well, they'd stage it, of course. I mean, was it really stage that big it. of a lie as long as the game was actually being developed? Well, yes, I mean, especially yeah. when you consider the way the demo was fabricated. Just a few weeks before E3, Lionhead would hire an actress Hi, to help stage their presentation and worked with a film crew to produce it. Oh my god. And look, staging Here we certain go. aspects of a technology for the purposes of ensuring a Not. smooth presentation is maybe arguably one thing. But the creative liberties that were taken with Milo's demo made implications that grossly exaggerated the capabilities of the actual product. And this was the factor that ultimately landed Peter in such hot water. Now, uh -huh. let's jump back to E3 2009, where Microsoft has just- I'm ready. I want to see the Project demo. Natal for the first time. 
The tech is impressive, and kind of steals the show from Sony, who unveiled a wand-based version of their own motion. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a fucking vibrator, man! Oh my god, I remember this! It was a fucking vibrator wand that they had as for, like, the Kinect PlayStation thing. Tech this is so nice. weird. That racket is actually in the virtual world. It's in Anton's hand. <laughs> Next to take the stage is Peter, who I can only assume is engaged in some sort of weird pre-show ritual behind the curtains, very a la Joker. I mean, you gotta be a little crazy to pull a stunt like this in front of the entire gaming industry. So, Peter Rack makes his presentation real. and introduces Milo to the world. Hi, Milo, oh, how are you doing? Hi, Claire, you okay? Actually, I'm a bit nervous. You? Nervous? I don't believe it. On first watch, the video actually looks pretty convincing. I remember watching this. This is so weird. Oh my god, old YouTube looks so fucking strange, man. But as we come to find, Peter is using a mix of both deceptive gameplay footage and clever language to mislead the viewer. The interactions presented in the video make the implication that players can have complex, free-flowing conversations with Milo, and can come to form deep, personal relationships with him. Listen, I was thinking today you should let me beat you at football again. That is if you finished your homework. You have finished your school project. I remember this! Claire knew Milo so well, she knew when he was worried about something. Of course, as you can probably tell, this entire interaction is scripted. Yeah, it's a little kid with like a VR headset and shit, man. It's fun. There's even moments in the video where Milo appears to remember seemingly impressive details about the actress's personal life. Science fiction is not even written about. Don't forget your mom's birthday. Did you catch that? Why Apparently you Milo just on a whim remembered remember Claire's mom's birthday. Which, once again, tries butt. to reinforce the idea that the two actually the have a relationship. Later on in the video, Milo leads Claire to a pond where Natal's capabilities for motion capture are shown off a little bit. Yet, okay. for some reason, even a basic minigame like this was faked. Oh Upon my god. inspection, you'll realize that Claire's movements are not entirely in sync with her reflection. For one reason or another, this entirely pre-rendered scene has the actress superimposed into the reflection of the water, forcing Claire to memorize her original movements and attempt to perform them in sync with the footage on screen. This obviously leads to errors, and quickly becomes Exhibit A for many skeptics trying to debunk the It's a good thing to realize with this being fake, just to be sure what project to talk and do. Wow! People are figuring it out even back then. I guess people weren't that stupid. Proving that this is a fake is hard, but you've convinced me. The video later on. But what proves to be one of the most glaring oversights of the whole video is actually a matter of perspective. Let me explain. When you're viewing any sort of portrait from your viewpoint, the subject of your gaze appears to follow you wherever you move around the room. Uh -huh. That's why paintings like the Mona Lisa seem to always be watching you, even if you change where you're standing. So, why isn't Milo doing that? Yes, he's looking at Claire, but we're not looking from Claire's perspective. This is, of course, once again, because the entire video was fabricated. <laughs> when the Lionhead team was putting together this demo, they found that Milo's natural line of vision would be directed towards the camera, ultimately ruining the immersion they wanted to create between Milo and Claire. So, they faked it, and in a blatant rejection for the laws of perspective, the team re-rigged Milo to look slightly to the side to look at Claire. <laughs> As you can probably tell so far, practically none of the aspects of the video were actually- I mean, it convinced a lot of people that it was real, so I mean, I, it worked. It actually worked. Real. Shocker, I know. Mm -hmm. And even if certain footage represented aspects of the game that did work, it was far easier to just fake the whole thing. For example, yeah. towards the end of the presentation, Claire would draw a picture of a fish and hold it up to the camera. Milo would then supposedly pull the image into the game world that, and look at it. That was way too fast, man! I think I remember thinking that was like way too fast for the camera to like get a peep at it. ...at it himself. And funnily enough, this tech actually did work in a live demo setting. 
turns out Milo had an incredible knack for recognizing drawings through the Natal camera, and okay. even learned to identify specific objects through It was a picture learning. of a peepee. -pee. It was actually one of the things Milo was best at, and there was even talk of improving the tech so that Milo could learn to identify new drawings as you showed them to him. Of course, the reins were pulled back on this to avoid making Milo an expert on identifying crudely drawn penises. But <laughs> The take home here is that it did actually work. So, in summary, what Peter <laughs> I knew it. showed the audience that night was a demo of a game that did technically exist, but the format in which they chose to present that game took way more creative liberties than it ever should have. And what did that result in? Possibly the most misled outpouring of enthusiasm a game has ever Wait, wait, wait. Go back, go back, go back. Possibly the most I want to see the comments. outpouring of Amazing! Really, it is! So you play this up? Oh my god! And then the other half are like, this looks fucking stupid. This isn't real. Enthusiasm a game has ever seen. Literally, I have Apart goofbums. A few I literally have goosebumps is like the Reddit, like, soy pog face. People were losing their minds about this game. I mean, if Milo was really as true to life as Peter had claimed, then this would have massive implications not only for gaming itself, but technology as a whole. If only it were true. Yep, Later that and it night, wasn't, haha. <laughs> the E3 press conference, a select group of journalists were picked to actually meet Milo and demo the project for cool. themselves. And this is where things started to take a bit of a turn. Oh. While the demo was impressive, many playtesters would quickly come to see through the smoke and mirror tricks used to give Milo the illusion of sentience. Mm -hmm. For example, Milo could understand words, but only certain ones, and those words had to be given within the correct context to be understood in the first place. If you asked Milo something yourself and he didn't understand, his code would prompt him to either politely nod or shake his head which made many attempts at communication just kind of fall flat. Uh -huh. If you tried to tell him a joke, sometimes Milo could read the tone of your voice and interpret it as such, omitting a laugh. Of course, Milo didn't actually get the joke and wouldn't comment on it in any way, but <laughs> it was part of the illusion the game tried to convey. But Most journalists you know. remarked on how if you played Milo by the rules, you could actually have half-decent conversations with him. But any, and I mean any attempt to go off script, would immediately poke holes in the illusion. Again, this was 2009. I would cut them a little bit of slack that this was pretty good for what they could do at the time. They should have just let it cook for like five more years and it would have been kind of cool, probably. But the journalist's impressions didn't really do much to- Now we have Neuro? Yeah, coded by A. Just like any hype train, once Funny, it gets going, Beatles. it's kind of hard to stop. So, E3 2009 ends, and Microsoft is swarmed with enthusiastic journalists chomping at the bit for details about Milo and Project Natal. And the excitement is palpable. Uh -oh. So, tell me more about your role with Project Natal. So, I'm essentially the technical director for the technologies that you saw. So, from our perspective, the inspiration really was, could we actually incorporate <laughs> the into the gameplay? That's me when I have to talk to chat. I'm like, oh. Whereby... oh. Of course, Peter does a few uh -huh. interviews as well. And you can rest assured his PR team is standing just outside the frame. What is the objective? Well, I could, <clears throat> you know what? I would love to tell you that. I could completely tell you. I could go through the story. There's, you know, mm, a, yes, very chat. Mm -hmm. story. But I have given myself a rule that I will not talk about things unless I can show them. But it is definitely a <laughs> The PR chat. The PR fucking told him to shut the hell up in his earpiece, in his other ear, probably. Um, date for project milo peter ensures that development is in full swing and while a release date cannot be given the game is most certainly expected to be brought to market yet strangely enough that would be the last time we'd hear of milo oh. for a very long time the following year e3 2010 would come and go without so much as a word from milo and fans definitely had some questions but this time they got different answers 
These, uh, you know, the Milo project was something that uh, Lionhead Studios and their labs had developed, and obviously that's a tech demo. Then Milo fell in the pond. To, yeah, he couldn't get exist. out. Can't but swim. Right now, it's uh, it's not a game that we're planning to bring to market. Oh. That was Aaron Greenberg, a PR executive for Microsoft, who made that statement sometime in 2010. Shortly after that, Peter would go on record to quite condescendingly denounce Aaron's statements. Oh. It was a weird era in the game's development where, depending on who you asked at Microsoft, your answer on Project Milo was completely different. Uh oh. Behind That's the scenes, not good. Peter was in a sort of power struggle with the higher ups at Microsoft. Didn't E3 die? Like during COVID or something? Or people said they don't care about it, so they had to shut it down? Was it like 2020? God, what a what a time, man. Shit just shutting down everywhere. People not going anywhere. Yeah, around COVID. Yeah, I think it was 2020. Yeah. E3 didn't even happen to you. Dude, it died. It died in like 2020. I think they said officially, they were like, yeah, we can't do this anymore. There's not enough interest. After roughly three years in development, Project Milo, now called Milo and Kate, was failing to meet the expectations Microsoft had in place. Sony stopped title. going, uh. And it definitely didn't help that Peter had wildly raised those expectations back in 2009. Worse still, Microsoft had significantly pulled back on Project Natal's hardware capabilities, attempting to cut costs by downgrading the device's processor, which subsequently <laughs> narrowed the scope for Project Milo. Fast forward to mid-2010, and fans are wondering when uh -oh. and if they'll ever get an update on Milo's development. It'll and be finally, ready when it's after ready! over a year of anticipation, Peter would eventually break his silence on the project. This update would come in the form of a TED Talk, which was... A TED Talk? Why? <laughs> ...already a really, really bad sign. If Microsoft what to say. actually had realistic plans to release Milo, they would have announced it at E3 2010 earlier. Yeah, I was about to say, why the fuck is it a fucking TED talk? That year. But clearly the game's release had reached a level of uncertainty that could no longer justify a feature at the event. So instead, Peter opts to quietly demo the game at TED Global, in what could be seen as one of the most egregious attempts at backpedaling I have ever seen. <laughs> I mean, what Peter demonstrates to the crowd at TED Global is almost a completely different game from what he showed fans the year before. And I the love way this. he introduces it just this is makes awesome. it all the worse. So He is a very, very talented salesman. I would love to have the ability to hire Peter uh, what is his name? Molyneux and just have him sell like an Alana fucking tail pillow. Be like... So this one has like a knife in it. You can store your gun in it and also your fucking tissues. And there's just so many tools that the Alana body pillow can offer for you, you know? And then it would sell like hotcakes, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't do any of those things. And you suckers will still fucking buy it. <laughs> a year ago, I showed this off at a computer show called E3. Really, Peter? A computer show? This comment yeah. was either a sign that Peter was getting old, or rather a feeble attempt to avoid mentioning the word video game to what I can only assume is a slightly older audience. This was a piece of technology of someone called Claire interacting with this boy. And mm -hmm. there was a huge row online. Row! About, hey, this can't be real. And so I waited till now to have an actual demo of the real tech. Wow. Peter the brain wow. Molyneux wow. has done it again. Wow. Really, this was his plan the whole time. No way this was some sort of half-baked attempt to backtrack on false promises made for a game that was built on misleading footage and blatant lies. It was just a primer to get us excited for the actual wow. game. Okay, but really though, have you ever witnessed a more blatant admission of guilt? I mean, mm -hmm. he literally comes out and says this is the actual demo of the real tech. Okay, but hold on. He's still selling it. You're That's still point, selling it. To hide that the game was a lie. And then he has the audacity to try and put a bow on the whole thing by pinpointing his team's <laughs> one sole goal. Just to get to this one simple idea. To create a real living being in a computer. 
Is that Peter? That one simple idea? You mean the idea that modern technology hasn't even come close to cracking? Oh the my idea God. that could one day lead to technological singularity, subsequently blurring the definition of what it actually means to be human? And you found that on the Xbox 360? In 2010. Listen, I've really tried to cut Peter some slack in this video, but the way he talks about creating Milo like he's some sort of 21st century Geppetto is just really, really annoying. <laughs> Yet he still tries to redeem himself with what appears to be some newfound attempt at transparency. Now, I'll be honest with you and say that most of it is just a trick. That's kind of base, to be honest. Like, he just straight up just says, you know, most of it is actually just like a an illusion. He literally mind trick geese the entire audience. You know that little fucking Pepe that does a little mind trick thing? He's like, it was all an illusion. It wasn't real. <laughs> yeah, the little mind trick, the little fucking Pepe. <laughs> you got scammed. I love that. Wow, there's a reason I'm spending so much time on this intro. I mean, with every sentence, Peter just finds a way to dig himself into a deeper hole, and it just keeps getting funnier. Based. So why don't we go over and have a look at the demo now. This is Dimitri. Wait, this is Dimitri? Like, the Project Dimitri? <laughs> Turns out this part isn't a lie. Apparently what? the original project was named after his godson the whole time, who... What? Yo, this is so fucking cooked. Actually what? Actually worked at Lionhead on the Fable games. What? That's now cool. I guess. Demo, the honest demo. Project and there's Dimitri. There's one difference right off the bat. It appears as though this time we have a real person playing the game live. Finally, the curtains have been drawn back, and we can see some real gameplay for the All first time. All right, I'm time. ready. Chat, I'm excited. Let's check it out. So. He's discovering the garden. You're helping him discover the garden by just pointing out these snails. So the demo finally begins, and what we appear to get is some sort of on-rails snail spotting simulator. It's a bizarre way to start, especially That's awesome. considering the bold claims Peter made about Milo in the intro. Okay. As the camera rolls along, Milo finds Pepe another snail point. on the ground. Soy at which point Milo encounters his first test of morality. Turns out Milo has a thirst for blood and sadism, and <laughs> he's gonna want to squish the snail, and your parenting is gonna save it. Toys with the idea of squishing the snail underneath his shoe. At this point, Dimitri is prompted to use voice commands to either encourage Milo's behavior or stop him. Do you want Milo to squash it? When you see the microphone, say yes. Squash. Go on, Milo, squash it. No, that's the right thing. No! What a sadist! <laughs> oh my god! Squash it, you pussy! <laughs> the crunch! I wonder if that was edited in or if that was actually part of the game. Good, good. He's gonna become evil and start shooting up drugs. <laughs> ah, yo, like, what? Why does he look? He looks so cooked. Do you guys see that? Look how cooked he looks. He's like, I just squished a snail. That's the right thing to do. Milo has changed. <laughs> Dude, this game is so fried. Well, that was unexpected. But oh my what god. What's a surprise is how the voice recognition system has changed. Okay. You'll notice that in this new demo, there are explicit prompts for when you can actually speak to Milo. Of course, this wildly contradicts Peter's first demo of the game, in uh -huh. which it's heavily implied that which was is totally faked and spontaneous. At this point, the presentation continues for another six or seven minutes, where Peter demos a handful of other incredibly boring minigames. But what makes it funny is how these demonstrations are always accompanied by long-winded boasts of how the game is so much more sophisticated than it actually looks. His face, by the way, is fully AI-driven. We have complete control over his blush responses. What the fuck is a blush response, chat? 
Do I have a blush response? A little, little blushy washy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you have a blush response? Shut the fuck up. I do not. <laughs> what the, the hell? Of his nostrils, his mind. The diameter of it what? is based in the cloud. If you're leaning forward, he would slightly change the neurolinguistic nature of neurolinguistic nature, huh? His face. You're actually sculpting. Kinda a do. Human Shut We've up. Got a database of words which we recognize. We wow. those words out. We also we also reference that with his ton uh, the tonation database. In all honesty, I would saw bullshitting the man bored to death by this presentation. After three years in development, original VTuber, so no man, incredibly underwhelming. So and bad. One can come to understand why Microsoft felt the same way. This is also made evident by the presentation's view count, which is dwarfed in comparison to the millions of views garnered by the first demo. Well, yeah, because they faked it. It looks better. Duh. Alana, please upgrade your blush response. <laughs> so it may come no! as no surprise to learn that shortly after this presentation was made, Microsoft would permanently shut down development. No way, really? That's crazy. This was, of course, due to a multitude of different factors and can't be simply attributed to one reason. Speculation points toward the fact that Milo was being developed during a time when the Kinect was still trying to understand its target audience. As the project evolved, Microsoft would opt to target demographics engaged in party settings, which kind of put Milo's mellow single-player gameplay into an awkward category. I guess it's that also makes fair to sense. Speculate that Microsoft closed development due to false expectations surrounding the game, which were set so high by Peter's outlandish claims. <laughs> this guy can get away with it, and nobody bats an eye. Where's the Vets Kai? They got fucking shit on for over reasons, uh, over over expecting stuff. To the Lionhead team, who were all incredibly over excited under about delivering. what they had built Excuse. up to that point. Regardless of Peter's <laughs> lies, Project Milo really utilized state-of-the-art technology that resulted in many impressive features. There was formidable voice, image, and even emotional recognition that genuinely would have held weight as impressive features for its time. So it came as even more of a disappointment when the team was forced to recycle all of their progress into a watered-down spin-off for the Fable series. Ah. The way Microsoft saw it, they weren't going to let three years of technological development fall through the cracks without making a little cash. So okay, much of fair enough. research ended up being reworked into a new Kinect game set in the Fable universe. Ah. Suddenly, ah, good. Milo's emotional recognition was being repurposed so players could develop bonds with in-game horses, and Milo's hand tracking became the foundation for casting spells. <laughs> what is this little guy doing? Hand tracking became the foundation for casting spells. <laughs> what? Xbox! Oh my god, Xbox. Yeah, Connect is a little bit cooked. <laughs> it definitely wasn't the kind of closure baking, the Lionhead Baking a patty cake. Milo, but True. at least it was actually released. Unfortunately, Fable The Journey was received poorly for the Connect, with yep. its main failing point boiling down to, you guessed it, false expectations. Crazy! Initially, were up and down that the game would not be an on-rails experience, but... Upon release, fans would come to find that exploration within the game was entirely linear, and players Crazy. were certainly not happy. After Fable's failure on Kinect in 2012, Peter would leave Lionhead permanently to pursue- Should've just stuck to making Black and White 3 mad. I hate this fucking corporate green bullshit. Look at him little smile on his fucking face too. He could have just made black and white three and made me happy. To yet fucking asshole. Adventure. Due to reasons most likely pertaining to Miles' Bitch. cancellation, Peter felt as though Microsoft's hold on Lionhead was becoming too much of a creative barrier and was disheartened with the company's decision to can the project. Peter shit goes dog, dog shit, that's why. new company in the gaming industry, 22 Cans. What the heck? 22 cans of garbage? I've never heard of this studio, actually.
Maybe I have, but I don't think I'd have. Surprisingly, though, Peter's new venture would Black and white three don't connect. I would die. For previously, with a sequence of scandals and false promises that would of course as a result of his presence in the media. Of course. It seems like no matter what team he was a part of, Peter was always finding ways of getting himself into. Why does he do that? He's like a sociopath. He's like a chronic liar, man. Like an actual chronic liar, except he's part of like an actual company and he's fucking over everyone. Trouble. As for Milo, well, it's been almost 10 years since anyone has spoken about him. Pathological liar, yeah, that's the right word. Went on to call the project filler or a tech demo that accidentally wound up in production. Yeah. And some at Microsoft deny it was ever a game in the first place. Fair enough. In 2012, Peter was asked about his thoughts on Microsoft's decision to cancel Milo, and in a brazen attempt to deflect all blame, claimed that he felt the industry just wasn't ready for it. Chat, were you ready for Milo, the talking child, talking to you? I don't know. I think that's kind of a... Uh... I think he's missing the mark a little bit, I would say. No, I am. I think so. Somehow, I was not ready. That Project Milo was just My too body ahead of wasn't ready. To be brought to market. And yeah, I sure. guess if you consider all the lies he made about the game, then yeah, he was right. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, it's kind of a shame. If Peter had just focused more on what was possible with Milo instead mm -hmm. of what could be possible, we might have actually seen the game released. And who knows, it might have been half decent. But the truth was, Milo's technical capabilities just weren't advanced enough to meet the expectations put in place for the project. And the Crazy. ideas that actually made Milo exciting just weren't ready to be made a reality. But now, with breakthroughs in artificial intelligence occurring Chat every GPT! other day, we may not have to wait too long before we see another company take a crack at the idea. Let's just hope that, unlike Peter, they've got the proof to back it up. Thanks for watching. I can't wait for AI waifus. Holy shit. It, it, we already it have AI waifus. Current in today's world, if we look at politicians and and kings and queens and leaders, they always promise us stuff and they never deliver on them. He is a fucking pathological liar. He's a narcissist, too. How dare you bring up this shit and then. <laughs> it's so ironic, man. Yeah. I can't wait for Black and White 3. That thing is in uh, de development hell because. Uh, Lionhead Studios is like dead and they don't actually have the rights to black and white, by the way. I was doing research as to why black and white isn't a thing and why nobody can like update the game. It's because nobody has the rights for it. I'm so fucking sad about it. Black and white is such a good game. So I think that's an interesting time. Hmm. Who has it? Nobody does. It was some complicated, janky, uh, it was, I think there's a video on it. I obviously I won't watch it because it's like really a niche game and stuff, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, black and white, it's been abandoned here. I watched this one. It's, it's a 30 minute video, but basically what happened was because Lionhead Studios fell apart, but it's owned by Microsoft and there was like some legal bullshit they it, it's owned by no one so nobody can work with it i don't know what it take what it would take for them to bring it back but i have no idea fan spiritual sequel but call it light and shadow yeah you get sued by fucking <laughs> microsoft <laughs> never heard of that game before yeah it was a very niche um fun little cult game it was very cool it's really old though uh, 80% of games, uh, are found in, in hell, in game development hell. Oh, link video. Oh, yeah, shit. Bring it back. Yeah, oh, crap. Cool. Where's the video? Oh, fuck. Was it? Ah, here. There's the video. Very nice video. Clap goes in the chat. Clap goes in the chat. I can clap girls again because my wrist doesn't hurt so much. Clap girls! 
Very nice video. Very informative. Very funny. Yay! Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, there's a lot of games in development, hell. Hmm. Not even development hell, they just aren't owned by anyone because studios fell apart and shit. It's very sad. Mommy! Piss, piss, piss. Shit! Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck the fucking shit on calm. Piss myself. Fuck, 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 fuck. Piss, fuck, piss, 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 pi